Hello and welcome to Koi Boy Games. I guess today we're uh, I'm gonna uh, I'm sorry, Solid Love. I'm stealing your thunder, but we're gonna do a little, little unboxing here of a uh, Caliclave Charge. Um, this is the new red deck um, from. They're the event deck, so they're supposed to be. Uh, you can pull them out at like a locals. You can play them, you know, and it will serve you well, I guess. Uh, so on the back, get huge benefits out of your tiny creatures, um, augmenting their damages with powerful permanence to create never-ending stream of aggro pain. Fun stuff, just my playstyle. Heard this one was pretty good. It's the only mono-colored one, so we're going to see here. ASMR going. ASMR. Okay. Alright. So here we, we got the actual box here. So, it's pretty nice. Um, you know, pop off the cover there. Pretty standard box that comes in. This is similar to those of the, um, the pre-releases and whatnot. You got your little, it says charge right there. So the actual like name of the deck. It's got a little fire symbol there. I don't know if you can see that, but it's there. All right, time to actually bust this bad boy open. Look at the cards, maybe I can get it open. Alright, so interesting thing about this is it comes with a sideboard too, as you can see on the inside there. Got this little placeholder, don't know why that's there, I was hoping there'd be a dice, I'm kind of disappointed about that. You got your sideboard divider, and you got your main deck it looks like, right here, and your sideboard, along with... So little ad here for Friday Night Magic, and a little resource about it. Pretty standard stuff. Now into the meat of it. Um, for as much as this was, it was like 30 bucks, I think. Uh, I really wish they would have put a little... I like the box, but... Honestly, I think an upgrade would be doing a plastic box, and I know that's probably not best for the environment, but it would actually give you somewhere to, like, put your card sleeves in, and actually, like, you wouldn't have to go out and get sleeves. Um, or, well, you'd have to go out and get sleeves, but you wouldn't have to go get the deck box. Even, like, a cheap, cheap one would be good. And then this, I was really disappointed in. I thought there was going to be spin down there. For as much money as it was, they could have included the spin down. Because what a lot of people don't realize is, yes, they're good cards, but when value hits the value, you know, when it, like, they overprint it um, in these sets, it goes down a bit. So you have to really think um, about how to make the actual product better. Because, you know, <sighs> Wizards of the Coast isn't the secondary market. The secondary market's their own thing, so they got to sell what they got to sell. So, that probably made no sense, but for those of you who get it, um, basically, they're selling this product for that money. They print these cards for probably, like, a cent each, probably less than that, and um, some of them, you know, not in this deck necessarily, but, like, you know, Black Lotus, the thing's over 40k, so, you know... To them, it's not much. I just, like, kind of wish they would have. That's really getting critiqued there, but presentation on the outside is beautiful. You got the Chandra art and just the back. Pretty cool. Not gonna lie. Here we go. Opening up this little... I'm gonna be careful here not to accidentally damage any cards, because they are kind of valuable. All right. The good thing with these two is it's a complete deck. You know what you're getting. Um... So let's let's start from the front, I guess. So we got a Bone Crusher Giant, um, pretty pretty standard one in standard. They're all standard legal decks. So pretty much he has the adventure, so he can cast as an instant. 
damage can't be prevented or can't be prevented this turn. Stomp deals two damage to any creature. And whenever he becomes the target of a spell, Bone Crusher Giant deals two damage to that spell's controller. Okay. Uh, then we got a Fervent Champion. Um, this guy's pretty cool. He was actually, I played him in the uh, pre release for this set, um, the uh, Throne Isle Drain. So, first strike haste when Fervent Champion attacks another creature, target attacking knight you control gets plus one, plus zero until end of turn. Equipped abilities, you activate that card. Um, target Fervent Champion costs three less to activate. So, that's, that's pretty decent. It's also the 2018 World Championship uh, card. So that means the guy who won the World Championship actually like uh, designed what it does and that kind of stuff. So we're looking at we got so we got one Bone Crusher Giant so far. We got a full playset of four of these boys right here. You got your four fervent champions. Um. As I saw it, it looks like we're getting more bone crushers. Yeah, you got you got a whole, whole play set of those guys. So these two, they're really good standard red cards. So even if you're not gonna run what this deck intends to do, you ever get bored, they're good cards. And even like some of these, I would say would hold up in just modern red, not modern red competitive. But you're definitely, just from the start, going to get your, your fun out of it. You're going to get, you're getting that red feel, you know, um, of just hitting fast. That's why it's one of my favorite colors. We got a Runaway Steam Kin. So it's Creature Elemental. Whenever you cast a red spell, the whole deck is. If Runaway Stream Kin has fewer than three 1 plus 1 plus counters on it, Put one plus one counters on Runaway Steam Crit. Remove three one one counters from Runaway Steam Crit. Add three red mana. So that really can hit hard uh, <laughs> if you let it. Uh, he's also a two drop and with a pretty decent ability. So that's going to hit um, quick. So you got, you got your four of those. You got a full playset there. Now, the one I was really excited about was this boy. I have this boy, um, if any of you have seen my latest video with Joe, I, I ran him. Um, Thurbrand Thrain of Redfell, really good. He is a staple now in red, I would say. He's getting there. Um, I expect for him to be around uh, a lot longer than a lot of people do, probably. I think he's definitely, he's definitely pulling his weight in Pioneer, and I think even in Modern, we could get there. Um, but, uh, I, I don't see much legacy play, but who really cares about legacy unless you have, like, $200 just, you know, in your pocket at all times. So, he's kind of neat. So, if a red source uh, you control would deal damage to an opponent or a permanent an opponent controls, it deals that much damage plus two instead. So, basically, um, any ability you have that's red that is... Yeah, just anything um, deals two more. So, you know, you got your Lava Axe, um, modern card, but deals five damage. That boy now does seven damage. So, I'm really tired. I had to think about that. <laughs> so, okay. All right. On to the next. So, the... Perhaps holy grail of this deck. We got Chandra Flame Acolyte. Or Acolyte of Flame. So, there she is. Now you got your, your magic waifu. Um, okay. So, zero plus on her is put loyalty counters on each red planeswalker you control. Uh, or a loyalty counter. So, that's nice. If you're running a bunch of red... You know, unfortunately, because these are all the same, you can't have all of them out. So I might cut that down. I don't know. Um, but that's pretty good. Um, zero. Again, create uh, two one one red elemental creature tokens. They gain haste. Uh, sacrifice them at the beginning of the next up step or next end step. Um, that's pretty good. They go away, which is kind of a downturn. 
Um, but that's still a thing. Um, minus two, you may cast target instant or sorcery card with converted mana cost three or less from your graveyard. If that card would be put into the graveyard by this turn, XL instead. That's the really good part. You can only use that two times because she's a plus four. Now, I don't know if there's anything else to boost her, but that's probably her only downturn. Granted, she's only a three to pop out, so you can just pop her out and do that. All right. And you get three of those, so not a full play set, but like I said, I don't think you really need it in that. All right, Ember Cleave. Kind of an interesting one. That's one of the mythics right there. All right, so Flash. This spell costs uh, one less to cast for each attacking creature you control. Okay. It's legendary ar artifact. All right. When Oh, so you play it as you're attacking. That's interesting. When Emberclave enters the battlefield, attach it to target creature you control. Equipped creature gets a 1-1 one, one plus and double strike and trample. Three to equip. Okay. So, you want to run it as Flash. Um, only problem I see with this card, first off, it's a legendary artifact, so you're going to need... Right now, if that's only for... Never mind, never mind. I was thinking legendary sorceries. So you got your legendary artifact, um, and the only downturn I see is it does have a heavier mana cost of 6, but that's pretty moderate once you keep going. Um... The new red land, so Castle Embereth. So you get some of those. You get about three of those. It's not not a bad one. Um, I'm not really gonna read the ability because it's not it's not all that interesting. It just buffs creatures and basically is a mountain. All right, Rimrock Knight. Look at that boy. There's a lot of dwarves in here. A lot of nice beardy dwarves. Okay, target creature gets. Plus two, plus zero, till end of turn. And that's his Boulder Rush instant um, adventure ability. Rimlock Knight can't be blocked. I'd say for two, that's a solid three one. Um, nothing special, but it's going to hit, and it's going to hit. So you get, get four of those bad boys. Definitely a uh, good one popper if anyone plays that. Alright, so Scorch Spitter. Um, whenever Scorch Spitter attacks, it deals one damage to attacking, um, or deals one damage to the player or planeswalker it's attacking. So you pretty much get one no matter what, even if it dies, and two if it actually hits through. So for one, that's pretty good, not gonna lie. Um, get four of those boys there. All right, Tin Street Dodger. Now this is one I was kind of looking forward to because I always like the denizens on the, the streets, um, especially like the D and D book with Ravnica. That was really cool as I am a DM, so um, not, that was definitely an experience there. <laughs> um, so Tin Street Dodger, it's a haste. Um, Tin Street Dodger can't be blocked this turn except by creatures with Defender. So there, there he is. Um, it's not great. Uh, it's it's a one one for one now. But what do you expect? Um, I might switch him out. Um, that giant. I like the uh, flavor text though. That giant didn't even see me, let alone catch me, and I was close enough to smell him. Of course, that's not saying much. It's humor, ha. Huh? Yeah, you get you get only three of those boys. Uh, they could include the fourth, but I don't feel like it's all that great of a card, honestly. Alright. Cavalclave of Calamity. Calamity. The namesake of the deck right here. Um, so what this does is whenever a creature you control with one or power one or less, Cavalclave of Calamity deals one to the player planeswalker that creature is attacking. So, you got that there. Um, so, is an enchantment staying on the field? Yeah, that's going to boost. That's the whole point of the deck. Um, you get four of these boys, and, I mean, 
pretty good. They're pretty, like, this is a solid engine. I mean, this is, it's nothing too special, but it pretty much makes everything like that one uh, Scorch Spitter we saw earlier. So, it's only two. Uh, as you can see, it probably can't, but uh, my camera's really bad. But this is really, uh, it's a neat art. Um, just for the art alone, it's a neat card. But it's it's pretty sweet, not gonna lie. All right, light up the stage spectacle. Um, so that was the new thing introduced in Ravnica, the newest Ravnica set. Um, I believe that was ooh. what was that one? I I need to look it up. It's it was a guild. I think it was guilds or Ravnica. Okay, okay. So um, spectacle. You may cast um. The spell for its spectacle cost rather than its mana cost, or its mana cost if an opponent loses life this turn. So it's really good because if you attack with those guys, you can play this in your second main phase. Exile the top two cards of your library until uh, your next turn. You may play those cards. So it pretty much does what Chandra does for about the same price with a little less staying power. Um, you do get three of them. So... Or four, I'm sorry. You get a full play set. Now, mountains. Um, I'm gonna, just going to pick out one of each art so you guys can see it. Okay. All right. So, these are the mountains. They're pretty standard mountains. I mean, I always think, you know, lands in general um, don't really get enough attention because the, the art on them truly is pretty beautiful. They were one of the things when I first started the game that I thought was super cool for some reason. <laughs> Alright, so, you get some double side tokens here. It looks like you got your satyr, you got your elemental from the Chandra. Get two of those. You get on an adventure double sided for some reason, but okay. And then you get a satyr, two devils. So pretty standard tokens, nothing uh too I wish they would like foiled or something. Does any of this have foil? A foil can be a blessing and a curse, cause uh you know, it can curl your cards, but let's see here. Checking for foil. Yeah, none of these cards are foil. Okay. All right. So we're going to put that in the box for now. I can reopen it. It's kind of a tough little box there. Yeah, this is not going to have the capacity to fit sleeves. I know it's not a total deck box, but you know. Put that divider in and put our tokens. Now onto the sideboard, which should be kind of interesting. So we got Experimental Frenzy. So you may look at the top card of your library at any time. You may play the top card of your library. Uh, you can't play cards from your hand. Um, three mana and one red is destroy Experimental Frenzy. So for as much as it costs, you can destroy it. This is really good if you want to go fast. Um, you know, that's a solid card. Like, honestly, over, what was it? was the one I was kind of doxing in there. Um, anyhow, that, that is solid. I think that would be a cool engine to run. Um, you have three of those, so that's something. Then we got a uh, Satyr's Cunning. 
create a 1-1 one, one Seder um, creature token with this creature can't be blocked. And then you can escape it for three. Um, exile two other cards from your graveyard. So, yeah. Um, that's that's a good one drop. Um, I might switch that guy out for the uh, little goblin dude. I didn't really like him too much, but... You know, you get three of those. It's pretty decent. Um, got some shocks. Deal two damage on any target. You know, like, how I'm going to play these. <laughs> There's no way. I mean, the art's actually pretty neat, too. Um, it looks like a Kaladesh-themed art, but just, like, in general, shock is always a good card. It's one. You can hit fast with it. And to always have another place out of it. It's, uh, ooh, I dropped more. Um, it's, it's just always a good thing. What the hell? I'll get to that. Okay. So, Slaying Fire, um, deals three damage to any target. Um, if at least three red mana was spent to cast a spell, the whole back's red mana, deal four damage instead. So, it's pretty good. You get... It's a little heavy of a price at three, um, but it's three for three. It's basically a bigger shock, so I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Um, Wreck on that. Yeah, you get three of those. Okay. Now, the real thing we've been waiting for. True star of the deck. When I saw this, I had to double check the box. I'm like, this mother, this mother freaking deck came with one. Okay, it's Tibble, Rakish Investigator. Now, if if you don't know, Tibble is the best planeswalker in all of Magic the Gathering. I'm gonna tell you why, okay? Doesn't matter who you're playing against, but everyone thinks, especially the original Tibble, everyone thinks he's a weak fuck. Now Kind of is. He's kind of a bit of a sim. I'm not going to lie to you guys. You know, he ain't some, some JoJo's buff dude out there. But, you know, the ability, basically, what he does is you draw a card, discard a card from random at your hand. Well, let's, let's be honest. There's... Most people um, play play sets of things. So... As long as you're established on the field, and if you get hit back a bit, Tybalt can be really good. And that's why I like Tybalt, because everyone just sees him, and they're like, why the hell did you play that card? And no one realizes you can deck cycle with red, which is dangerous as all hell. Um, it's, I don't know, I just always like Tybalt for that reason. So we got uh, Tybalt, Rakish Investigator. Um, so your opponents can't gain life. Right off, that's a shutdown. Um, he's five, so even he's three to cast, and he's five loyalty. So even from that, that's a that's a shutdown. Um, you just shut down your opponents right there, which is good. It's not an end of the world thing. Um, minus two, um, create a one one red devil creature token with when this creature dies, it deals one damage any target. I don't really see, unless you were really stressed for it, why you'd use that, honestly. To just put him out and combo with the Chandra thing, um, where you can just keep adding loyalty. Why not? You know, it's like, it's going to prevent, um, you can get those tokens, you can prevent your uh, opponent from gaining life. Um, honestly, I think the only reason he wasn't put in the main deck is because he's Tybalt, and I think Tybalt gets a really bad rap. Uh, he's he's always been a wild card, and that's that's what I like. It, Tybalt wasn't designed to be good. He wasn't designed like Gideon, where he just goes and fucks everything up. He wasn't designed like a uh, an Ashiok that just mills you to death. He was designed as that weird multi-tool. Um... Yeah, yeah, that's uh, exactly what he does, and it's just, it's interesting. <laughs> okay, so that's that. I hope you've enjoyed this little uh, 
unboxing slash uh, really crappy deck tech here. Um, but there's uh, one thing I kind of want to talk about. So I've scheduled my videos pretty far in advance, and for the, those of you who know, um, such pretty, uh, you know, it's a pretty box all around, just nice art. I think that's why I got this one. It has like the nicest looking art, just the red on it. Anyhow, um, with this whole virus thing and all, uh, I think it's important. Um, I know I don't have too many subscribers or anything. We're, we're sitting at about 15. I'm not big. But I think it's important that I, I state something. And that something is... I don't know what's going to happen from here. Um, I don't think any of us know what's going to happen from here. And that's okay. Um, but by the time this probably goes up, um, it might not matter. But I just wanted to say, um, I am now a quote-unquote essential worker. Um, I work at a grocery store, and I'm doing overnight stocking, and it is just tearing me apart, like, <laughs> physically. So, I mean, it's not bad. It's not a bad job. Um, it's, it's good pay. It's I'm doing fine there. Um, but it is full-time that I'm balancing it with school. So, making videos and doing that um, even though I don't do incredibly too much editing, um, it's, it's going to be extremely hard. Uh, so I might just take a step back for a bit. I honestly don't know. Um, I don't know where to go from here, and I think a lot of people are feeling that same way. Um, I don't make videos professionally or anything. I'm not monetized, obviously. Um, but... It's it's getting to the point where it's it's hard to fit this into my schedule, and it's not that I don't want to do it. It's just I physically can't do it. And, you know, I think school and work has to come a little first just because it's, it's, it's bringing in the money, not to sell out, not to say I don't want to do this. Um, I do. I do. I really do. Um, but it's, it's going to get hard, so... That's why I've premiered a bunch of stuff, like, constantly, um, because I want to, I want to seem like an active channel, um, while it's going, uh, and it's just, I, I want to still kind of keep that authentic experience as if I were here constantly posting, because, um, ever since this went down, I, I thought something might be happening, so when, when I do that, it's not it's not to, like, piss people off and say, like, oh, you have to wait so long to see this video, because if I had my free time, they wouldn't be as much quality, but I could just pump videos out of my ass, you know? There's ways. It, I, I don't have incredibly too much editing software yet, so I don't really have to worry about that. Um, but i just like to say, um, for all of you watching, I appreciate it. Um, Times are hard. We're gonna get through it. Um, shit, shit's gonna hit the fan probably even harder, and we we just need to be ready for that, you know. Um, and I think I think what we really need to do is just I know it's really hard with um the whole social isolation thing. But we really, we really need to bring the human aspect back into things. Um, I think now, at this time more than anything, um, not only do we have, you know, the people doing, like, healthcare, not only do we have the people doing, um, you know, like, I'm working at a grocery, the quote-unquote essential people, um, but I think at this time... Um, well, we, we definitely need all of them. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> I, I experienced that firsthand. We, we definitely need people hitting the ground. But um, I would encourage anyone who is just sitting at home and maybe can't, you know, can't work or, you know, do um, anything because of maybe their 
they're older, um, their um, immune system, they're too young, uh, their immune system's compromised. Um, if you don't have all that much going on, I would definitely take this opportunity to learn more about yourself and, um, I don't know, maybe just create something, make something artistic, you know, put something out there that represents you at this time. Because I feel a lot of, in my own experience and a lot of other people's experience, that when something goes wrong, in the moment, it hurts. In the moment, it's hell. But what you can bring out of that hell can be some of the best art, it can be some of the best music, it can be some of the best scientific discovery, it can be, you know, it can be a lot of things. It can, when people are pushed to their limit, not saying you should do anything dangerous, don't do that. When people are pushed there, and they rise to the challenge, they can do great things. So, I, I think people should take this as, you know, an opportunity I'm not saying do anything reckless, that is not the point of this, but I'm just saying it wouldn't hurt to take this time to try something new, um, maybe not in a, a social way because that's kind of shut down, but try, try something new that you, or revisit something, you know. And, for example, like, I'm doing a lot of uh, Warhammer stuff. That was something I got out of. I said, I'd never do again. And I looked at it, and I'm like, I have, like, $3,000 of minis just sitting here. That I either bought, people bought for me, and I'm like, well, I'm so deep down this rabbit hole. What am I going to, I'm at least going to restorate them. I'm at least going to, you know, put them, I don't know, like somewhere, do something, you know, maybe get back into the game, and I'm just going to take that time to kind of work on that, because that's something I really enjoyed, um, so that's kind of my, my thing there, but I think everyone kind of needs to find their own thing, and I think this is a time, if you have the time, to take a step back, or even if you don't, to take a step forward, and really see what's going on, you know, what's going on with you, what's going on with other people, where do you stand, what, the neat thing about this is we can truly see what people are about, and what they're doing, and what their true intentions are, so it's, it's kind of different, but anyhow, that's kind of a rant, um, moral of the story, um, just stay safe out there, if anything, uh, you know, enjoy the good parts, enjoy the memes, Maybe learn something about yourself. Maybe go go just, you know, not physically out, but, you know, go out, you know, into the internet, maybe uh, research something. Find something you might want to try when this is all over or get prepared for that thing. Because um, a lot of people don't realize how valuable time actually is. And when you have it, um, it's, it's a thing. Like right now, I'm really pressed for time. So I'm not going to take a step back. I mean, and that's not a bad thing. Don't think when I say taking a step back, you're losing progress. I'm going to take a step forward, and I'm hitting, you know, everything on that front line with all I got. Just because that's what I feel I need to do at this moment. Um, but that might not be for everyone. We're all different people, and um, that's, that's how that goes. So... Moral of the story, videos might seem a little inconsistent, might be a bit weird on the channel for quite some time. Like I said, I get like two days off, um, which really aren't days off. Um, they're more just school stuff. <laughs> so, and me trying to catch up. Uh, but, you know, in all, uh, we're going to get through this. It's going to get over at one point. It might not be pretty. And I think we need to realize that it's it's most definitely already not pretty. It's just whether it's affected you or the people around you um, right now. But there's a lot of things that aren't.
pretty necessarily. Um, and I think we just really need to kind of, you know, just take this time to really think and, you know, I don't know, find your own way. I don't know. Um, but just do you, just do you, just do you through it. Whatever you got to do, do you through it. And I think that's uh, where I'm going to end. That's the, the. Really crappy message, but PSA, I'm out of here.